Hey, this is Jurgen Rasmus, and welcome to the Provocative Hypnosis Vlog. This is going to be a quick episode about how you can be a stupid coach, whether that's a NLP coach or whether you're some form of hypnotherapist. So um, let me give you three concrete client cases to illustrate how you can kind of ramp up your own stupidity so that you could make your own life as a coach or as a therapist as miserable as possible. You may as well get as much bang for the buck as you can. So I was just contacted by a guy for anger management and for irritability. And you know, we had a little conversation on the phone and was kind of inquiring into what's going on in his life. And what I discovered was that he worked 10 to 15 hours a day, pretty much seven days a week. And when I inquired into his sleep routine, I discovered that he, well, his, his self-report, which is seldom quite accurate, but his self-report was that he slept about four hours every night. Now get that. Four hours of sleep every night, 10 to 15 hours of work every day, seven days a week. It would have been a miracle if this guy wasn't seriously irritable and angry and snappy. That amount of sleep deprivation and uh, work schedule on top of it. I remember quite a few years back, I had a guy who worked 90 to 100 hour weeks who slept, according to him, about five hours a night. And he wanted me to hypnotize him so that he could have more energy and uh, not feel the fatigue as much. You know? So... One way to be a very stupid coach is to overlook the obvious, you know. And, and by that I mean overlook that we are fundamentally logical beings. You know, we, we need a certain amount of sleep. We need good nutrition. We, we, we need the meaning in our lives. You know, most of us have a need for some good quality social interaction. Yeah. So if you what I what I did with with this particular last client was I I I asked him to go see a an episode on the Joe Rogan podcast where Joe Rogan has a guy called Matthew Walker there who's an expert on sleep. And I I, I said to him, may that particular video scare the crap out of you. And I meant that literally because, because sleep deprivation is really, really dangerous. So one way you can be a really lousy coach or therapist is by ignoring the obvious, like ignoring the obvious. And by ignoring that what might seem obvious to you is not necessarily so for your clients. I've been stunned on occasions to get requests from people like this who, who often see no connection whatsoever with the life that they're living and the symptoms that they're having. I had another phone call today which inspired me to make this video. A woman who wanted hypnosis for weight loss, right? And um, she first just sent me this SMS, you know, do you work on the weekends? How much does it cost? How much does it take? Which is kind of a, a, an attitude often of someone who's just looking for some quick fix. Like, I'm just going to roll my car into the garage and have a coffee in the back room and you just kind of wake me up when you're done with the car you know that that sort of attitude and i i spoke with her on the phone and i i said how fat are you and I, I i like to use you know direct language as she said she said well that's not nice to ask someone i said well, we're gonna have to be that direct if we're gonna work together and she said well 172 centimeters 114 kilograms 
and she wondered if I could hypnotize her and if she thought she would need more than one session. And she, you know, I, <clears throat> I was, I was kind of uh, stunned by that. And, and she further asked if I could please see her on a day it was convenient for her that her best friend tagged along so that they could kind of make it into a vacation, like a, a nice day. And she said she really wanted to come. And, um... Of course, I, I kind of laid down the law and said, <clears throat> no, you're, you're not going to come here uh, on a day with your friend. It's not going to be a vacation. It's going to be damn hard work. And I don't have a magic wand. You're not going to roll your car into the garage. And it's if we do something together, you're going to be an, an active participant with a level of commitment where you're willing to do whatever it takes without having a guarantee from me in terms of an outcome. So I kind of laid out everything. And after that, she got really uncertain and, and needed some time to, to process things. And I said, and this is my full-time profession. I don't see clients on the weekends. I, I spend the weekends with my kids, uh, with, with my family. So, you know, one way of being a really stupid hypnotherapist would, would be to say, yes, that's easy. We do it all the time. Yes, we, we can do the one session thing. No problem. No, yeah, of course your friend can come along. You know, just view it as a vacation. Um, here's, here's your magic bullet. Very often, some clients literally ask for the impossible. They, they, they ask for things that are completely unreasonable. And sometimes there's an element of knowing that they're kind of bullshitting you and, and wanting you to set them straight. And, and other times there's an element of people just having expectations that are completely off the mark. So if, I mean, you know, sometimes people do make dramatic changes quickly, but you know, a, a person who's 114 kilograms, who does her best to make the case that this is such an ingrained habit, but she wonders whether, you know, she can be hypnotized and can it be done in one touch and, and can her friend kind of just tag along, you know. If you, if you accept that, you know, you're on your way to being a really, really stupid one, right? Like a really, really stupid one. Well, I'll, I'll give you a final example from a, a few years back. And I, I have to say, you know, some physicians um, and, and psychiatrists have been some of the most stupid people I have ever met and have ever encountered. They, they, they can be some of the most anti-psychological and least wise people you can meet. I'm I'm often puzzled and stunned by 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 the level of stupidity often displayed in that profession. So a woman calls me, wonders if I can work with her 10-year-old son for depression. I ask her, I say, look, he's a bit too young to be this depressed. What's going on here? I I have a long conversation with her on the phone, and I, I discover that she's in an abusive relationship where her, son's, where her son is having the experience of seeing his stepfather crap out of his mother on a very regular basis. Now, this young kid who's 10 years old is told that his, his sense of helplessness and hopelessness means that he has a chemical imbalance in the brain. It's a depression. So in, in child psychiatry, they diagnosed him with a chemical imbalance in the brain and gave him antidepressants. Without either... No one should do that, by the way. You know, it's, it's, it's a... <laughs> it's, it's a... But... but without even inquiring into what the hell was going on in this particular kid's life. 
So I, I, I said to the mother, I said, look, when you're 10 years old and some drunk maniac eats the crap out of your mother, you are kind of helpless. And it is a kind of hopeless situation. His, his perception, his feelings are quite valid, given the particular life circumstance that he's in. Now, if, if you think for one second that I'm going to work with him under the premise that there's something wrong with him or something wrong with his perceptions, given the exact situation that he is in, you're mistaken. But if you, as a responsible mother, dump this bastard and move your kid to a location where he doesn't have to view his mother being beat on a weekly basis. If you do that, and he still has some adjustment issues, I'll, I'll take him on. Or if you need to do some work with yourself that you can grow the, the, the level of, well, it's self-esteem or self-worth or self-respect so that you're able to take that step. Will happily work with you as a client. The client wasn't interested, not at all, right? But but child psychiatry was more than willing to diagnose him and drug him without inquiring into what was going on at all. Like that's that's just champion level stupidity. But it's not champion level stupidity. It's kind of the norm. It's kind of how psychiatry operates fundamentally. Like the vast majority of them are that stupid. You know, that that kind of is a big problem. So overlook the obvious. Assume that everything that's obvious to you is obvious to your client. And of course, assume that everything that's obvious to you is necessarily true. So I hope this was useful. I hope this gave you some, some food for thought. There are many ways to be a stupid coach or to be a stupid therapist. One of them, of course, is to accept the whole idea of mental illness to begin with and to accept the idea that you're actually doing therapy when you're actually not, right? So if, if, if quackery, being a quack, is... Pretending to practice medicine without a license. Psychiatry is pretending to practice medicine with a license. Okay. So, so that's 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 kind of one thing to to to, to be a stupid coach. Uh, but you, you can watch my video uh, how mental illness is a myth if, if you want to go more deeply into this. And of course, the second thing is to just ignore the obvious. Just completely ignore the obvious and, and, and don't look into what's going on in people's lives at all. Assume that everything that's obvious to you is obvious to your clients. And of course, never question your own assumptions. If, if you can do those, uh, I have a lot of confidence that you can have um, quite a miserable career as a coach, as a therapist. And, and on balance, do way more harm than good. So anyways, I hope this was inspirational. Till next time.